Hey Phoenix fam, what's pop? And in today's video, we're gonna talk about Zoom Camps, the new Run Cam Scope Cam 2 in particular. What is a Scope Cam? What is a Zoom Cam? And what is special about the new Run Cam Scope Cam 2? Basically, it's a zoomed in mini camera that records the trajectory of the BB during your airsoft gameplay. Today, in an unpaid collaboration with Run Cam, we're gonna have a Phoenix Fam look at the new Scope Cam 2 from Run Cam. Look at the pros and cons. We're gonna see how it performs on the airsoft field and we're gonna compare it to my old Run Cam 2 and even to my Foxia Legend 2. And we're gonna find out together if this is the perfect scope cam for you to start filming your airsoft games. Let's go. Okay, Basti, I'm sorry. What is the Scope Cam 2? The Scope Cam 2 is a little mini camera that's mounted onto the handguard of your airsoft replica to film the trajectory of the BB leaving the barrel and with this like recording your personal kill cam. Uh, the scope cam is one of the holy trinity of uh, yeah, cameras you use in airsoft filmmaking. Next to the first person view, which is usually a GoPro mounted on the helmet or the boonie, how it's looking for the actual player. Then there's the selfie cam, a camera that is also mounted probably on the airsoft replica, but it's filming yourself for dramatic effect if you're going through a building to a, through a door if you're climbing something. And then there's the scope cam or zoom cam which is either used for purposes of editing your gameplay to show the BB flying and you recording the actual hit of the enemy player or for personal use to see how you actually performed and to improve your yeah, skill basically. And do you actually hit the person you are yelling at? Because guys, believe me, there's so many times where you in no way actually hit the person and you were absolutely sure you did, but you checked the footage and you actually didn't even come close. Okay, let's get uh, to the specs of the little run cam scope cam 2. It has a new HD 40 millimeter lens. This is why it's also a little bit bigger here in the front. This is perfect for 30 to 70 meter engagement. So perfect as a sniper, the 40 millimeter, meaning it has a high focal length. So it is pretty zoomed. There's two other versions available of this camera. And with this, the front sizes shrinks a little bit. There's a 25 millimeter and there's a 3.8 millimeter wide angle. The 25 millimeter, which is probably half the size here in the front, is for normal AG engagements around 25 to 50 meters. Perfect sweet spot. And then there's the 3.6 millimeter wide angle, which is for pistols, but I don't really see an application here because it's basically a wide angle camera. So you could also put your GoPro under your pistol. And would you do that? Uh, I'm not so sure. I, I would need to test that out if that actually makes sense. What I can already say with feeling this, this comes in an aluminum body and it is IP64 waterproof for all kinds of operations, which is awesome. It records at 1080p 60 frames per second and it has a battery life up to 240 minutes. That is four hours. This is, might be a game changer, guys. This sounds really exciting because it is so annoying to have external batteries mounted on the top of your airsoft replica next to the scope cam to keep the scope cam powering during the day. To getting rid of that external battery is for me personally, it's a really big deal. And I'm gonna see how this uh, four hours hold up actually. Because that means that you could probably only f charge this in between games. So you have a pause in the middle of the game, you put it onto a power bank and you charge it or you go back to respawn to refill BBs. You have a little bit of time before you join into the next game. You just hook it up to a power bank real quick. And I think it, this will help you to go through the entire day without running an external battery on your SF replica, which is great. Then in the front, it has 1.5 millimeter toughened glass, which is great because yeah, getting your, a lens shut out 
Oh, it's a pain. I already had my GoPro shout out like two times now, I believe. Like the case and the actual GoPro lens. Yeah, that was just bad luck. has a toolless installation onto your wrist and I'm actually really excited about this guys because this is the first time that I seen this for an accessory that goes onto your rail because it is spring powered which means that I have to push it in to pull it apart and it clamps automatically down which is great because usually it's the other way around you set it on and you have to screw it tight here you just push the button you put it on you leave it and it's already clamping and then you can tighten it down even further it's a small little detail but for me personally this is a really big deal it has a one button record which is awesome you just push this forward it's gonna start recording it gives me even a vibrating feedback that I can feel through the whole gun this is so easy even my team leader Basti has no problem starting this up without any experience of uh, filmmaking, making airsoft gameplays. You just push it forward, you have a blinking light, you have a blinking light, easy. And it even reminds you with vibrating feedback if the battery is getting low. Now it's actually blinking because I have no SD card inside. Speaking of SD cards, inside go micro SD cards up to 128 gigabytes. And guys, don't save money on SD cards. I know they can get a little pricey, but they got a little bit more affordable. Go with the higher grade ones because they will not give you issues. If you go cheap on SD cards, you're in for a lot of troubles, glitches whatsoever. Just go with quality stuff. I usually go with SunDisk. So guys, to set up your camera, you just need your uh, preferred smartphone and the RunCam app. And it's uh, rather easy to get going and to check if the focus is correct and format your SD card and change some internal settings. So you just uh, turn the camera on, switch the camera, uh, the button up. Then we hold the one button that there actually is until it's blue. Then we go onto our smartphone device. Uh, then we go into the Wi-Fi settings and it says run cam and the uh, menu actually gives you a password, which is like one, two, three, four, five, blah, blah, blah. You connect to the Wi-Fi of the little camera and you head over to the run cam app. Whoops, there it is, run cam scope cam two connect your camera. The first time it takes you through a process and you have to find it. Here, already it's telling me that there's no SD card inside. Thank you, RunCam, that's great. And yeah, you have already a live preview. This is my desk and you can see everything is out of focus. But if we go like out the window, we can see, yeah, let's say it's like 30 meters away this wall. Uh, yeah, you can already tell this is in focus. And here on top, we have some stuff we can change. White balance, I leave that on auto because if I move around the forest, it might change the white balance, whatever I'm pointing at. I think that's the easiest. Then I put the ISO, ISO on auto, which means, uh, which is quite, can be quite handy if you're running through the forest because if you're pointing your airsoft replica into like a dark room, or a dark area, it will give you the perfect uh, exposure value, not that it's gonna be too dark and you can't see your enemy player. The metering mode I'm using is uh, center weighted. So it's metering the exposure only from the center of the frame, which you want to be in focus and to be perfectly in exposure because in the center is probably the person you're trying to hit. So <laughs> you want him in, uh, yeah, in perfect uh, lighting conditions. You could also do spot metering. That's even only like the middle parts. I do the center weighted. So it's giving me an average of a little bit of the center. And then the average, it's basically taking the average out of everything. I, I like the center weighted. Anyways, so here we have some, yeah, I turned the date stamp off, auto sync, auto shut down three minutes, front light, audio is on. Then here's your micro SD. Always format your micro SD inside the camera you're using it with. Uh, this is just, that is just a tip from using many different action cameras with many different SD cards and sometimes you run into issues. So the best thing to do, put an SD card in, format and then off you go. Guys, let's see how the footage of the scope cam actually looks like. Let's go. So let's do a side-by-side -side shooting test with the Novridge SSX 303 and we're starting with the run cam scope cam 2 with the 40 millimeter mic. 
uh, 40 millimeter, <laughs> not the mic, lens. Basti is at, wie viel bist du? Basti is at 35 meters. Well, we should start the camera. 101, start the camera before you start shooting. It's vibrating, I know it's running, great. I see the red light. Okay, Basti, I'm sorry. Alter, hab ich dir voll in die Fresse geballert? Ja. Oh nein, sorry. Ich schieß tiefer. Oh, sorry, Basti, I shot him right in the face. Okay, ich glaube, das war gut. Okay, let's try the uh, Run Camp 2 with uh, 25 mm lens uh, I built myself. That was uh, quite the pain in the ass. So let's see how this compares to the 40 mm new Run Cam. <laughs> Sorry! Okay, I think, uh, yeah, you get a quite good idea. He's 35 meters away. If you look that way, and if you look that way, you definitely see a little bit more. Okay, lastly, I have here my pack box uh, for uh, Foxier Legend 2. I built myself, I hollowed out this whole thing, made this, but this has like an 18 millimeter lens. So it's also a little bit f like wider field of view. Let's see how that compares. Okay, Basti, you ready? right there 35 meters go a little bit to the side go a little bit to the side and this is how it looks with the foxy legend 2 thanks so much guys it's coming further boo, 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 boo. okay basti i'm sorry i'm just falling in the face of Sorry. Okay, Basti, I'm sorry. Alter. Hab ich dir voll in die Fresse geballert? Oh nein, sorry. Okay guys, I'm running you really quick about the evolution of my scope cam, zoom cams endeavors. And first off, I have this little device. It's my Foxia Legend 2. I myself built into this pack box. I drilled out the entire pack box. I've glued the Foxy Legend 2 in there where I changed the lens. It was a complete hassle. It was totally horrible because I bought the wrong lens without an IR filter, which you need. Otherwise you're gonna have a total pink image. And I had to order that separately, glue it onto the back of the lens, then put the lens in and try to put the camera in here center it and i drilled out the front and it kind of worked but it didn't work perfectly i used it for a lot of gameplays what i liked is this look that you can yeah it looks really nice it doesn't look like a camera it looks like a pack box and you could even like press onto the pack box to power on the camera it already gives me a little feedback because yeah i did some modifications that like I drilled some holes in here right where the LEDs are and I put it in some uh, hot glue and the light basically gets transported. You can see the blinking lights and so on. It's basically just glued in with hot glue, but the quality wasn't good enough for me and also it wasn't zoomed in so much. So you could never really see the BB impacting. So I moved on to the Run Cam 2 with the 25 millimeter lens, which is perfect in my opinion for AEGs and normal airsoft distances. I used to run this also in a 3D printed kind of pack box my friend Fabi made for me. It was mounted also onto the wrist system 
and I can take it also apart. I can open the front and then the camera would slide in. I have access on the back to power it on, on the Airsoft replica, but I was running into some issues. I think the compression on the camera was a little bit too hard. I think in the summer there was some heating issues. So I moved on to this very normal run cam clamp on and that worked great. I think the quality is holding up and it's great for your AG gameplays, though, I'm starting to have, and you guys know, a lot of problems with the run cam too, because I changed the lens myself. I had some problems and I'm getting more and more problems of glitching out, the camera not working, the camera being like, oh yeah, you're pressing too hard on me. I'm not gonna record anything. I'm overheating. I'm deleting the entire clip you just filmed. Scope cams and zoom cams are a headache for itself. And then now I'm uh, really happy so I can make a step further also because I'm starting airsoft sniping with the sniper version, the 40 millimeter scope cam two. I think it's a perfect evolution of always getting a little bit better and a little bit more user friendly for the actual airsoft customer. Okay guys, let's get into the pros of the scope cam two. First of all, it has a great recording quality straight out of the camera. There's nothing really to be too sad about. It looks great straight out of the camera and you can really nicely see the BB flying. I enjoyed it a lot. A big pro for me is the housing and the actual battery inside. This thing is built for Airsoft. These were not built for Airsoft. These are built for crazy FPV drones or different other applications, not where you need to be in all weather for a very long time, throw it around and have big ballsy impacts. So this is built for Airsoft with yeah, a goal in mind. The vibrating feature is very handy. When the camera battery is actually below 8%, the camera vibrates four times continuously every 30 seconds. So it gives you a warning, hey, I'm running low, hey, I'm running low, I need energy, I need energy. Great. And you can actually, if you have it on, you feel the vibrating in the grip when you're holding your replica. Fantastic. Big plus point for me, they moved away from micro USB. Oh, holy airsoft Jesus, finally. Because yeah, these, these mini USB, these micro USB, horrible. They break off all the time, they get loose over time. And now with USB-C, you not even have faster charging, but also the are a lot more sturdy. If you hit the cable while it's charging, it's not gonna break off instantly. Uh, with this, I had a lot of issues, not even to talk about this. This is completely basically loose inside of the camera. Then also a pro for me is the look on your Airsoft replica. I think it kind of fits into a sniper, style and you can camouflage it a little bit onto your rifle. It doesn't look like this or the orange one or a crazy neon green one, if you know what I mean. But yeah, I like the black look. I like the streamlined stuff with a little bit of like technicals looking, you know, it goes into this direction, which I enjoy. But coming to some cons of the Runcam Scope Cam 2, my biggest con is that it only records 1080p, not even 2.7K or 4K. I would really love to see that in this camera because to center the frame properly in post to get the shot impact perfectly in the middle, sometimes it's really nice to have this extra resolution to zoom in a little bit. Also, if you throw a warp stabilizer on it, it's gonna zoom in a little bit. To have this extra quality, it just looks nicer because we're talking about tiny little twigs, we're talking about little airsoft BBs, 2.7K, 4K makes a huge difference and just looks so much nicer. I would like to see that in here. The audio, well, yeah, some people use this audio. I would highly recommend to mute that track. A lot of people, I see that all the time, really annoying, only use this audio that comes out of here for syncing. Though, I think they did a really good job because it's leveled pretty low, which means you can, if you put, throw it into your editing software, you can see the spikes in the waveform, which informs you, okay, this is actually where I took a shot. Again, nice, you can just look over your video and you could see, ah, okay, the, these are my engagements. Pro tip for fellow Airsoft filmmakers, check out Plural Eyes. It does your syncing for you and it's what I'm using since forever. Another little con is you cannot hot swap the batteries. If this camera runs empty, you have to put it on a charger, you can't use it. You can't just take the battery out and put a different battery in and off you go. 
this is built in, so you have to charge it through the camera, so to speak. To come to a little bit of a conclusion now, we have to be reminded this is my first sniper zoom cam or scope cam. Dealing with scope cams can be incredibly frustrating, especially if you're a DIY them yourself. They give up on you on many occasions. I had so much headaches with this one. They might glitch out on you all the time. With this, I hope this is gonna be a little bit better because it's built for this purpose. To have a sturdy housing and a long battery life is perfect for recording airsoft gameplays. Being in bad weather and not having a battery pack is awesome. Just charge it in between games or in your lunch break and we're probably gonna be fine through the entire game day. I much rather have this little bit heavier camera and a little bit yeah, bigger camera than running in an external battery on the front, which I also have to mount somehow. And yeah, you have to run a cable there. I much rather have everything in here. To get this a tiny little bit better, I would say throw in 2.7K, throw in 4K run cam, and this is gonna be so perfect for airsoft filmmakers. I cannot believe it. Like I'm actually excited about this camera and you can see it worked really well when we did the review about the SSX-303. All the shots were filmed with this and also, yeah, you saw some footage in, in this comparing all the different kinds of zoom cams I have and I use over time. And of course you can crop always to 120% or so without losing that much quality, but to get this extra crispiness of 2.7K, I would like to have that. So guys, I hope you learned a little bit about scope cams and their differences in focal length. The lower you get, the more wider angle you have. The higher you get, the more of a yeah, zoom you have. This is the 40 millimeter, there's a 25 millimeter for AGs, and then there's the 3.6 millimeter for pistols, which we have to see if that actually works. But maybe you saw which focal length is the best to record your personal gameplay and which is best suited for you. Maybe you play a sniper role, maybe you play the Assaulter AG. I hope you could see firsthand which works best for you and your game style. If you guys want, I can tell you a little bit more about the technical part about of scope cams once they go on your favorite editing software. Just leave a question about that in the comments below. The RunCam ScopeCam 2 is available on the RunCam website. And don't be afraid that is not a European shop or a German shop. It shipped perfectly fine, I think within a week and a half. So I had no troubles at all and it came straight to my house. All links, of course, are provided in the description below for you lazy typing bastards. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button and now watch a different video. You could check out the comprehensive review we did on there. SSX-303 filmed with this and a shot busty in the balls, so go check that out. Bye!